The information discussed in this PillCast episode are merely opinions and do not constitute formal policy or legal guidance of any kind. Hello, and welcome to another PillCast episode, the series where we discuss federal procurement innovation topics in 10 minutes or less. We guarantee it. I'm David Jablonski with the DHS Procurement Innovation Lab, and I have my coworker Trevor Wagner here with me to share with you a process that could save you a lot of time and effort on your next procurement. That's right, David. In this episode, we're going to look at a new technique called fusion procurements. If you want to hear more about this time-saving technique, then stick around. It's coming right up. There have been a handful of teams that have used this technique and projects coached by the pill. But in this episode, we will find out how a team used this technique and was able to award four task orders for four requirements totaling $1.4 billion in just under 50 days. But before we learn more about that team, though, I think it's best that we cover some basics so that you understand what the Fusion Procurements Innovation Technique is all about. This procurement innovation technique, it's used when you fuse or bring together multiple requirements for what would normally be multiple solicitations into a single solicitation. But we're not talking about using one solicitation that results in multiple award IDIQs or BPAs. These would be standalone awards against different requirements. Thanks for clarifying that, Trevor. And the requirements, they could be related or completely different requirements that are combined together into that one solicitation. The awards can also result in multiple contracts, agreements, or task orders to multiple vendors. But before getting to the awards, so Trevor, how are the evaluation approaches streamlined for this technique? Well, when it comes to evaluating the responses received for the solicitation, you have some options you can choose from. You could select one evaluation strategy, one evaluation team to evaluate all the responses to the solicitation for each of the requirements. Or could you, you could use different evaluation strategies and teams for some or each of the requirements in the solicitation. The choice is yours. It is whatever makes the most sense for the solicitation and program. After evaluations are complete, you would issue the awards separately for each requirement to the awarded vendors. Now, Trevor, why don't you share that story that you teased with us a moment ago so that we could see how this fusion procurement technique actually looks in practice? Well, Customs and Border Protection has a program office called Targeting and Analysis Systems Program Directorate, or TASPD. They had four upcoming requirements, which meant you know, four separate statements of work. So do they use just one solicitation for all four requirements? Actually, they decided to set aside two of the task orders for small businesses. So they had one solicitation for the large business task orders, which is shown on the left, and one for the small businesses listed on the right, using two different GWACs. So these solicitations were issued using FAR 16505 procedures. Okay, so they had two solicitations instead of one solicitation for the four requirements. All right, got it. Now, were the evaluation approaches similar at least? Yes, both solicitations followed the same evaluation approach, factors, and overall evaluation process. This meant although there were four separate evaluations and award write-ups, there was one evaluation team, contracting officer, and lead attorney advisor going through each. Since the process didn't change, the team was able to get through all of them in a similar streamlined fashion. That's pretty amazing. Now, how did the team sequence the submissions and evaluations? Well, the two solicitations were released on the same day, each with two separate statements of work to the two GWACs. There were four task orders awarded against the two solicitations in just 47 and 48 days, totaling one4 billion dollars. The team just kept rolling through the evaluations until they were complete. What a great story on applying the fusion procurement techniques. And it's amazing how quick the team was able to award the four requirements using those two solicitations. Uh, David, remember, I shared that these orders were issued using FAR 16505 procedures. Does this approach work in FAR 15.3 or other FAR parts as well? It, it does, Trevor. Now, the fusion procurement technique 
for everyone out there, it works in any FAR part. There is nothing in the FAR that prohibits this practice. When it comes to the evaluation criteria, you have options for your approach. You can use the same evaluation strategy and evaluation teams for uh, evaluating the responses to the solicitation, similar to the story of the CBP Task PD team that Trevor just shared. And you can also have slightly different factors and required submissions if necessary. Ultimately, it is your team's decision on what approach to use. Now, the real benefits of the technique is the time and effort it can save, basically streamlining the review processes. One solicitation or one approach being reviewed through legal review, solicitation board review, and other chain of command reviews you might have. Also, if it's one evaluation team, then the same or similar model allows them to repeat that approach already put in practice. That's a great point. And if you do like the CVP Task PD team did, and also keep the evaluation process the same, then all parties, the government and industry, can get through the process more efficiently. So there you have it. Another procurement innovation technique for your teams to consider on future requirements. There are a handful of teams we have assisted coaching this technique already. Let us know if you have used this technique by commenting in the video below. And make sure you like this video, subscribe to our channel, share this with your colleagues, and hit that notification button so that you get all of our latest updates. Thank you all for joining us, and we look forward to seeing you on our next PillCast episode.